Hey, Kevin here, and uh, I just wanted to do a video here for everybody. Um, this might be getting a little uh, controversial, but I'm going to do it because I think it, it's uh, something that, you know, needs to be discussed, and that's, you know, how to avoid a 30-year mortgage. And I have avoided 30-year mortgages my entire life. I've never had one, and I never will have one. And there's no reason to have a 30-year mortgage. There's not really any reason to have a mortgage, period. And, and that's what the conversation here is all about. Um, the, 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 the number one word or optimum word here when it comes to dealing with mortgages, housing, lending, debt, and everything, you know, mixed up into all this and this whole work until you're 65 and having this 30 year mortgage and all these loans and yada yada is simply one, boils down to one word and I've done a lot of thinking on this and, and you know, to get to this conclusion and kind of create this conversation out there and that's the word patience. The problem today and, and, and the, I would go with the problem for a, a while has been nobody has any patience when it comes to dealing with material things in your life. And so, you know, not just mortgages, but cars, you know, loans for credit cards, you know, I mean, there's just so many things going on that keep people in this whole debt repayment cycle all their life and and you're spending a horrendous amount of money uh, in interest and, and you know fees that have to go along associated with all this debt and uh, you know the, the, the problem is that everybody wants to have everything right now and that's causing all the angst all the you know problems in in our consumer society today is everybody wants it now. They don't have any patience to save money and buy something outright or pay as they go as they can afford it with cash. So three words there, patience, cash, and now. That's the, that's the problem. You know, before banking, how did everybody have things? They had to, they had to figure it out. They had to come put it together on their own. They had to, you know, pay cash and they had to do it over a period of time. We've been working on this project here officially for about two years since we bought the property and started the process, but we haven't worked on it, you know, 40 hours a week, day after day uh, over the last two years. So it's been, you know, we've taken time off from the project. We took, you know, the better part of this last winter off. We've done some traveling. We've, you know, if it's a nice day out, we say, hey, we're going to the beach, we're going fishing, we're going bike riding, whatever. So we haven't, you know, been grinding on this thing nonstop, but we're, we're okay with that. It doesn't, you know, I mean, a lot of houses get built in about 90 days. That's kind of a, a window for, you know, weather and so forth. You start in the spring, you get done before the fall weather sh sets in and so forth. And it takes, you know, on a commercial scale, it's, that's, that's kind of the process. But we're not in that. We don't, we don't have that timeline. We're not under any kind of guidelines or pressure or, or due dates to be done at a certain period of time. And so we're enjoying the process of building the house. We're paying as we go to build the house and we're not having to go out and, and take on any debt or, or, or finance, uh, get a mortgage, have a bank involved. And, and uh, so that's really been making it a lot easier for us to be able to do what we want to do. We, we don't have to do this according to what the bank uh, dictates. And, and so I think if people were just to take a little bit of time and have some patience and realize that, you know, if you want it now, that's what's causing you to have to have all this debt. If you want a new car and you're not willing to save up the money, then yes, you're going to have a car loan and, you know, you're going to spend a lot more money on a, on a vehicle that's depreciating. If you're buying a house, you're going to spend a tremendous amount of money over, over a long period of time to finance that house. You don't own the house. People that say they're homeowners, that's a, that's a false comment they, they think they're homeowners but they are home buyers the bank owns the home so they, they've conveniently made that sound as if you own the home because of course they need you to keep making the payments on the thing because they really don't want it back but skip a payment and watch what happens if you don't think you're if you think you're a homeowner you've been getting some nasty phone calls and letters real quick but you don't have to go through any of that. It's unnecessary. But if you're thinking you want to go out and buy these big fancy new houses or even, you know, just the problem is we're buying more house and more car and more everything than we can afford. We're, we're in, you know, putting ourselves into debt decades out for things that we want right now. 
and that is costing us in terms of extra uh, expenses to borrow that money, um, all this time that we have to take away from life in order to go earn that money in order to have that thing right now. And so we spend our, you know, most of our adult and working lives and then some having to make the payments for the things that we wanted now instead of saving up and having some patience to be able to pay cash or pay as they go to own something. And this is not the first time I've done this. The first time I did this, I went into a bank and to, to get a loan to build a home and they pretty much laughed me out of there and, and it kind of ticked me off and so I didn't really know how to build a home but I was going to build one and that's why they told me I couldn't have the money because I wasn't a contractor and I didn't have any experience. And so they also told me I couldn't build it for the amount of money I was asking for. And, and really reading between the lines, they didn't want to loan me just that small amount of money. They, they really want to do you know, bigger mortgages because it makes better financial sense for them to you know, have a hundred and $200,000 mortgage than to have a $25,000 loan that I'm going to pay back relatively quickly. And so they wouldn't do it. And so that made me even more determined to figure out how to do it on my own. I did that. We did it, my wife and I, while we both worked two jobs each and raised four kids and built a home for cash and, and didn't have a mortgage. And that was 20 some years ago and uh, we've raised our kids and we've moved on and we're now, we're now building a small home again in another location. And so you also may have to acquire some skills in order to stay out of debt. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that either. I have, uh, when I was 25 years old, my wife and I uh, showed up in the area that we lived the last 30 years in on the other side of the state with two little kids and uh, about seven or eight boxes and about 10 bucks in our pocket. We didn't have a car. We showed up on the train and we wound up uh, moving in with their parents for a, a short period of time because we had very little resources and I had a, injured my back and was unable to work at that time. And so we, we really started with nothing. Now, just, you know, maybe even a little less than that. And uh, we worked our way up from there. We wound up buying ourselves a, a really old, uh, cheap $2,000, 10 by 55 uh, mobile home that was, you know, same, same age as me at the time. Um, and we lived in that for a few years while we got our, our feet back under ourselves and, and then, you know, started uh, accumulating some cash to go out and buy property and, and uh, you know, build our first home. And, you know, we, we sacrificed, if that's what you want to call it, we, we chose not to go into debt. Rather, we, we chose to not sit around watching TV at night and, you know, paying cable bills and, uh, you know, goofing off and we, we our goofing off and our hobby and our everything was about coming up with the cash to come up with more building materials to keep building on our house. My children will tell you that they hated going to uh, the hardware and lumber departments every weekend when they were little because we had to go buy materials and, they, and that was boring to them but now they're adults and they think it's great because they're doing the same thing. I say all that because I say that, you know, this is just completely unnecessary to be in debt. It's completely unnecessary to have a mortgage, especially a 30-year mortgage. And most people never get out from under their 30-year mortgages because as soon as they start building this thing called equity um, and getting a little bit uh, of, of money up, then the bank comes along and says, hey, we'll give you a new line of credit for only this much and you can go out and do whatever you want with it. So then they go out and they buy boats and they go out and buy RVs and they go out and buy whatever and they get new toys and then they just keep, now they have two payments on their house, the mortgage and the second, which is their, you know, giant credit card against their house and they, they, you know, pay for the kid's wedding or the college or the whatever and they never get out of debt and they're just, you know, the whole idea was to never have to, you know, be able to retire without having a house payment. It never happens for people. Um, you know, you wind up upside down in these things. The market goes up, goes down, you get in trouble. The, the interest rates change. The debts, you know, balloons come in, into play. People lose their homes all the time because of this. They, they, or they walk away from them because they lose their job and the house isn't even worth what they are uh, owing on it. I mean, it's just ridiculous all these things that come into play as the economy cycles through the highs and lows. If you own your house, it doesn't matter. So, you know, take a little bit of extra time. I don't care if you had to live in an RV and spent five years of your life building a home, it would be worth it to me 
rather than having a 30-year mortgage or a mortgage in your entire life or making rent payments or whatever and never getting out from under that. You, your, your economy of scale here is so much better and, and I don't care what the price of gas or milk or eggs or cheese is or whether the houses are worth more or less, when you own your own home it doesn't matter. And it's a heck of a lot cheaper than having mortgages and, and you know every time the price of something goes up and down it makes you squeal because you're, you're always you know not having enough paycheck at the end of the month to take care of everything because of all these debts you're having on your head. Completely unnecessary, totally self-inflicted, ridiculous. And, and so I will, you know, I'm going to pitch this again because I'm going to keep pitching this. Our home builders course is available. It'll walk you through the whole process of what we've been doing here for the last uh, year and a half or so from you know starting to look for a, a piece of property or a lot to build on all the way through the, the finish of, of building your home, all the, all the infrastructure and, and how to deal with contractors, how to be your own general contractor. I mean, it's just A to Z. We got a number of people in the course right now that are really enjoying it. $69 a month is what it's going to run you, about the same as most people pay for their cable bill or their internet, maybe even less. You could be watching TV every night or you could be learning how to be mortgage free and never have to have a 30 year mortgage in your entire life. What's better for you? And I think it's important to point out Kevin, that's only 11 months of that after the initial $99 yes. payment. Yes, $99 down, $69 a month for 11 months, you get this thing uh, spelled out for you in, in great detail. We've, we've you know, video, we've, audio. Yeah, uh, we've been audio. doing this, you know, all the way through. You may not want to build your own house, but you may want to act as your own general contractor and dictate and, and oversee the process of getting your house built. And this will help you understand that process so that you can be uh, educated and informed about how to make those decisions and how to pick the right people to get the job done, how to create and stay within your budget and how to you know wind up with a good finished product at the end that you can be happy with and be very little you know cost compared to going into a mortgage situation the the, the house here would cost over seventy thousand dollars if i paid somebody to build it we're going to do it for around thirty thirty five that's including appliances um, not in counting the land because that's that's a variable that you have to you know pick those that that can go up and down and back and forth. I mean you can get a lot for as little as five or six thousand dollars. You can spend a quarter million. That's up to you to pick the place you want to put a house. But just you know this is this is a house that is livable and and we did it. Not a whole lot more space than this with four kids. Since there's just the two of us, we're building a little smaller. It's, it's a starter, I mean, if, if, or maybe it's a finisher, depending on who you are and what your circumstances are. But if you build this much house, you can always add on. You can add on a garage, you can add on a carport, you can add on more bedrooms, more bathrooms, but do it for cash as you can afford to do it rather than being hung up in a 30-year mortgage and, and paying through the nose and having to go out and go to work every day to have to pay for that which means you're not spending your time in the house anyway, so it seems almost kind of silly to own a home you don't even have time to spend in because you gotta go out and make all this money to pay for it. It just seems, you know, the rat race just doesn't appeal to me. We get to get up every day and, and, and hang out in here and build on the house and goof off and, and do other things and we decide what we wanna do and how to mix that percentage-wise as we go. And, and that gives us the option because I have no house payment and I don't have any car payments and I don't have any credit card payments and so our cost of living is a lot smaller than a lot of people's and you know I just think it just makes more sense so I just thought I'd throw that out there you guys give me some feedback on this tell me what you think tell me to you know stick it in my ear whatever you want to do but I just I just want to I guess appeal to it and, and, and let you know that there's there's an alternative and there's a, there's a way to not have to deal with that if you don't want to struggle with that all your life you don't have to so anyway check out the link below for the course if you're interested go take a look at it give me some feedback give me some comments tell me what you think and I'll see you on the next video